People barely wandered through the territory anymore due to the weather getting colder, which bore the watchdog of the infamous Sunderman's turf. She wasn't biologically a dog, but she had earned the name of Guardian of the Perimeter, crawling on all four and notorious for aerial attacks. She spotted a faded red yet tattered hoodie, sleeves rolled up to reveal self-inflicted wounds which had healed and left nothing but scars, along with dark gray handkerchief tied around her neck and the operator symbol embroidered onto it, signifying that she was indeed a meat puppet of the tall man. She also had stained beige cargo pants, black heavy-duty combat boots, and a mask with gruesome haunting attributes. Its black, empty, hollow eyes, its wide, cryptic smile, and and the dried-out, bladdered bloodstains from her previous victims could strike fear into the core of anyone's sane. Her most well-known trait were her gloves, which contained sharp, curved metal claws at the fingertips. All those features contributed to what she was, Slenderman's proxy. Rogue trudged through the underbrush, scooting away scattered human remains that gave up the musk decay every now and then with her boots whilst going through the heavy accommodated fog. For a fact, she knew no hunts were going to be made today. No human in the right mind would take a hiking trip this early in the day. For crying out loud, it was twilight hour. The masked proxy didn't seem to find anything interesting to do in the meantime. The others were still asleep and she was on duty to watch the claim terrain. She scaled up onto the treetops and found a sturdy branch to lounge on while she kept close watch from above. As the sky became a lighter hue and the sun rose, there was more life in the forest. Not just the chirping of cicadas, but the unmistakable voices of human beings. No, I haven't found Greg yet, honey. I'm trying. The cops aren't doing much and I feel like it's been... And I feel like I've been a terrible father if I don't do something about it. It's been three weeks, Kyla. The voice belonged to an adult male from the sound of it. Finally, after weeks of waiting for something worth prying on. Rogue sat there on the fetal position, digging her metal claws in the branch as she listened attentively to pick up where the noise was coming from. Once she pinpointed the location, she was off, transitioning from treetop to treetop, emitting high-pitched coyote-like noises. Once she caught sight of the wandering, lanky, middle-aged man who was chattering on the phone, Rogue's shackles creased the light, airy chuckles from swiftly moving through treetop branch to branch, causing leaves to rustle with her quick momentum. She continued toying with her victim. Seeing him drenched in fear almost was enough to encourage her to continue tormenting him. As she transitioned from tree to tree, she began her haunting animal-like yipes, sending shivers down the man's spine. I'll call you back, sweetie, he stuttered as he clicked to end the call and dropped the phone due to a trembling hand, trying to muster up enough courage to produce a coherent sentence. Greg, Gregory, he muttered pathetically, hoping it was his lost loved one. Little did he know that his son had fallen victim to the Slender Man. After a while of toying with his weakness, he stopped on a sturdy branch above him, looming over and stared down to the withering man of the dark, hollowed eyes. He could hear the muffled sound of heavy breathing coming from above him. A malice, cryptic grin, blood-stained mask obscured the predator's face. Don't look up, or you'll regret it, she cooed again, tapping her clawed fingertips against the wooden bark beneath, before digging her sharp metal nails against it, causing the flesh wound to, to bleed sap and drip onto the man's head. The danger was more than any he had ever encountered. The gruesome attributes of the creature almost made her even seem inhuman. He began to shriek and stammer backwards as he saw the horror before him. Rogue lunged herself onto the branch and onto him, knocking him back off his feet and onto the ground, straddling him tightly and began slashing at his feet, her claws cutting through the flesh like butter and twisted his arms until they broke. The defenseless man began howling in pain as he tried to fight the proxy off of him, but to no avail. She had him pinned down and was literally tearing him apart. His cries were only music to her wicked ears as she used the tip of her claws to penetrate through his eyes hooking it and ripping the sphere out of the socket and ogled it before tossing it aside and, and doing the same to the other. She continued her torture until she gave out the final blood-curdling cry that echoed through the woods. You shouldn't be wandering through here, stranger. The murderer chuckled as the disfigured man lay dead in his own crimson liquid.